What domestic violence orders are available to you if you are the victim of domestic violence? Hey, it's Terry Gorry, and this is the Terry Gorry Podcast. The law changed there in 2019, from the 1st of January 2019. There is a new Domestic Violence Act 2018 which came into force. And in that act, there is provision for various orders, such as a safety order, a barring order, an emergency barring order, an interim barring order, a protection order, and so forth. The first order you can get or the first order referred to in the legislation in section 6 is a safety order and basically it is an order which does not put the person out of a house but does make an order where prohibiting the respondent from using or threatening to use violence against molesting or putting in fear the applicant or the dependent person and if he or she is residing at a place other than the place where the applicant or that dependent person resides, watching or besetting a place where the applicant or the dependent person resides. So it's not a barring order per se, it doesn't put the person out of the home, but it is an order preventing them from using or threatening violence. A safety order can be made for up to five years and persons who can apply for one would include spouses and civil partners, parents with a child in common, partners in an intimate relationship and dating partners, that is, partners who are not living together, parents of an abusive child, people living together, former partners. All of those persons can apply for a safety order and it's set out in Section 6 of the Domestic Violence Act 2018. The next order which is a much more severe order, is set out in Section 7, and it is a barring order. And when this order is made, it will prohibit the respondent from doing one or more of the following, using or threatening to use violence against, molesting or putting in fear the applicant or a dependent person, attending at or in the vicinity of, or watching or besetting a place where the applicant or a dependent person resides, following or communicating, including by electronic means, with the applicant or a dependent person. And the barring order puts the person out of the home in which they are living, and it prohibits them from entering it. A barring order can last up to three years. Then there is an interim barring order. It's a temporary order which can be granted pending the hearing of the full application for a barring order. It's set out in section eight. And a court will grant an interim barring order where there is a reasonable grounds for believing there is an immediate risk of significant harm to the applicant or a dependent person and the making of a protection order would not be sufficient to protect the applicant or a dependent person. And that's where an interim barring order is granted. It's an immediate order and it requires the respondent, the violent person, to leave the home. Section 9 then of the Domestic Violence Act 2018 makes provision for an emergency barring order. An emergency barring order is one which, where the court believes that there's immediate risk, reasonable grounds for believing that there is an immediate risk of significant harm to the applicant or a dependent person. If an order is not made immediately, the court shall make this order. Direct the respondent, if residing at the place where the applicant or that dependent person resides, to leave that place. And whether the respondent is or is not residing at the place where the applicant or that dependent person resides, prohibit that respondent from entering that place for such period not exceeding eight working days as specified in the order. So you'll note that an emergency barring order has a maximum time period of eight working days. It's worth noting that in relation to an emergency barring order, there's no property test. In other words, the question of who owns the property or whether a person 
the violent person uh, or respondent has an interest in the property or indeed the applicant has an interest in the property that doesn't arise with an emergency barring order whereas it does arise with a barring order and just to be clear on that in relation to a barring order just to be clear in relation to a barring order the court in respect of a person who is an applicant for a barring order the court will not make a barring order in respect of the place where the applicant or dependent person resides where the respondent has a legal or beneficial interest in that place and the applicant has no legal or beneficial interest or the applicant's legal or beneficial interest is in the opinion of the court less than that of the respondent so there is a property test there that i've referred to in the barring order situation or application whereas the property test will not apply to the application for an emergency barring order section 10 then provides the protection order and it prohibits the respondent to the application from doing one or more of the following using or threatening to use violence against molesting or putting in fear the applicant or the dependent person if she he or she is residing at a place other than the place where the applicant or the dependent person resides watching or besetting the place where the applicant or the dependent person resides following or communicating including by electronic means with the applicant or that dependent person where a protection order has been made any of the following may apply to have the order varied where the application for the order is made by the agency in respect of a dependent person the agency the person referred to uh, the respondent so a protection order is temporary and only in place until the hearing of the substantive application for a safety order or a barring order it's an interim measure you apply for any of these orders in your local district court the factors that will be considered in hearing the application are set out in section 5 of the domestic violence act 2018 those factors would include any history of violence by the respondent any convictions of the respondent substance abuse history of animal cruelty age and state of health of the applicant for example if the applicant was a pregnant person so the domestic violence act 2018 does provide protection for victims of domestic violence insofar as the law can provide protection obviously you must go to the district court and make your application and you must um, ultimately the guards will be involved perhaps as well in serving the order if an order is granted on an ex parte basis and so on but there is help for people who are victims of domestic violence and it's important to be aware of the orders that can be uh, made by the district court and it's important as well to understand that if you go to your district court office they will be of assistance in uh, giving you the correct forms to fill out depending on the particular circumstances and depending on the application that you wish to make and the order you wish to make thanks a lot for listening and don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss an episode Thank you.